finally seeing the fulfillment of that dream and vision of Steve Jobs? Uh, absolutely. You know, back in, in 2008 with PI, PA Semi, it was all about the iPod. Uh, it was all about the iPhone it was, and the iPad. And now it's finally come to full fruition with the Macs. And those, the new Macs, as well as the, 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 the M1 and the M1 Pros, are a um, phenomenal product. I ordered them within minutes after the launch because it is definitely dramatically different than anything on the market. So th there are chip companies <laughs> that sort of make their money trying to make the best chips, whether it's Intel, Pat Gelsinger saying, yeah, well, we're going to try to get Apple back. Uh, Qualcomm, which has managed to still stay in there with its, you know, um, you know, 5G chips in phones thus far, but Apple's trying to work them out. AMD, Lisa Su saying uh, that heterogeneous computing is the future. She's going to be working on it. Uh, is, what are the chances that Apple actually reverses course from here if one of these other companies can claim to have a better product? I, I think it's very, very hard to see. Unless Apple stumbles in some way with their chip program, which it's hard to see, I don't think that they're going to ever go back to buying, you know, SOC's system on chips from anyone else. And the reason being is not technical. The reason being is margin. There's so much margin to be gained when you're looking at 60 points margin, 70 points margin, 80 points margin that Intel can make on a, on a chip. When you actually take that away and you can put it back into the product or reduce product prices, there, there's going to be a huge disincentive to ever switch away from that model as long as one of these companies doesn't come up with some 10x better technology at, the, at truly at the transistor or silicon level. So I just don't see that, you know, the domino has fallen and it's not getting back up for any time soon unless there's a, techno, a, a technical change. Tony, I want to talk to you about design, which, of course, Johnny Ive made so remarkable and unique over the years. But there's a Bloomberg opinion piece recently that argues perhaps Apple's actually better off at the current moment without someone like Johnny Ive. You take the new MacBook Pro and it had all of these things that don't necessarily make it more beautiful, but make it more practical. So what do you think? Um, maybe an unpopular opinion, but certainly creative professionals very pleased with what, with what they saw earlier this week. I, I yeah, I think it's a great question. I think you really have to look at the type of customers. You know, if you're really about consumers and, and simplicity, then there's one, one way of designing. When you're looking at professionals who are using these things every day and have to have convenience, you need to look at the products in that light. So really, what you're seeing is a bifurcation of the line for certain types of customers. And I think you just have to make sure you optimize for, for each one. Before, it was kind of... Um, in the middle strategy, now you can really feel it, you know, bifurcating, and that feels right. And I think if you look at all the reviews, um, it's all coming back as a very, very positive for Apple and the customers as well are, are signing up, or, you know, buying quickly. Right. So it's it great feels to see. right for a lot of folks right now. But what about the long term, Tony? I mean, Apple's famous for, you know, knowing what consumers want before they know what they want. So could this almost be seen as a compromise, perhaps losing their edge? pulling or throwing in the towel a little too early? No, no, I don't think that's that. You know, Apple is, look, 20 years ago, Apple was a very different company than it is today. And it serves a lot of different types of customers. And so they're just trying to go and target each of those types of customers with the right products. Before, when you only had a certain amount of volume, you had to try to put everybody in one bucket. While the volume is growing and trem growing tremendously for the different types of products, that's why you have this bifurcation. So I don't think that's a problem. You're seeing it the, in the iPads. You're seeing it in the iPhones. That's just going to continue given, you know, the market dominance of Apple.